Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the AMD Athlon 3000G. It's the latest in the Athlon lineup and essentially a refresh of last year's 200GE series. If you are after a low power, low cost solution and want to play light games such as CSGO in your spare time, or maybe some heavier titles if you're feeling daring, this may be just right for you. At around £45 here, or $55 in the US, it's probably one of the cheapest new processors on offer right now, and as a big fan of last year's 200GE, I just had to see what this one can do. Of course gaming is the name of the uh, game here, and that's where I want to start. With 2 cores, 4 threads and onboard Vega 3 graphics, this really is a great little all-in-one package, and with a few graphical sacrifices can handle even some of the newest games with at least 30 frames per second. That's what I want to talk about first, I'll be discussing how well it does or doesn't do, and then I'll be throwing up some comparative figures to my Athlon 200GE, which I'm still using in a secondary system to this day, though I have a feeling it may soon get replaced by this little thing. Both chips I'm testing have been overclocked to 3.8 GHz, the highest stable speed on my motherboard, and both have been paired with 3200 MHz DDR4, 16 gigs of the stuff to be precise. So let's get into what it takes to hit 30 frames per second or beyond with the 3000G and integrated Vega 3 iGPU. Now I was probably being a little daring when it came to Crisis 1080p with the high preset across the board didn't really have a positive effect on the frame rate here, 24 to 25 FPS was the average, so I decided to drop the shader settings down to medium, and this brought our average up to 35 FPS. I know the game doesn't look quite as good, in fact it turns it into an entirely different game from a graphical standpoint, but it does make it playable, at least in my opinion. I didn't target 60 frames per second because that's probably going to be impossible on a chip like this in most titles. In comparison to the 200GE overclocked to the same 3.8 gigahertz with the same ram and we saw a few frames less dirt rally 2 at 1080p with the low preset also ran at just over 30 frames per second 31 to be precise you can also hit 30 fps with the medium preset if you drop the resolution down to 720p which may be fine on a smaller monitor but i decided to keep full hd here and just drop things down to low that's my personal preference but of course your preferences may vary. I think the game still looks okay. We were on the low preset and not the very low preset, which would allow you to squeeze a few more frames out of this game. But if you lock it to 30, then you're going to have a pretty decent experience on this little chip. Let's not forget that this really isn't designed for use in games such as this, but I just had to put this thing through its paces and see what it could really do when pushed. And I'm quite pleased so far. What I'm more pleased about though is Kingdom Come Deliverance. How this game is running on an integrated Vega 3 iGPU, well I just don't know. It's a similar story to Crisis where the 3000G is just over that 30fps line and the 200GE is just under it. We are running 1024 by 768 in order to hit this 30fps average, but I still don't think it looks too bad to be honest. Everything is off or as low as it can go, and uh, yeah, Kingdom Come Deliverance, even in the busier areas of this little marketplace at the beginning of the game, doesn't give us too much trouble. Like I said before, I'm quite surprised at this result. If you'd have said to me when this first came out that I'd be playing this on an integrated graphics solution with at least 30 frames per second, I would have said impossible, no matter the settings I was picturing in my head. 60 FPS may be achievable if you use the INI files to drop the resolution down to say 320 by 240 but that is going to look terrible. <laughs> Who would want a pixelated mess <laughs> like that? Aha, uh -huh. here we are in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, in order to hit 30 frames per second with the 3000G here or the 200GE, you're going to have to make some pretty big graphical sacrifices here. First of all, you're going to have to turn everything down to low or off, depending on the available setting, and then drop the resolution down to 1280 by 720 and select 50% render scale or resolution scale, I forget exactly what it's called, in the game menu. Again, on a smaller display, this probably won't look as bad 
but here on my 40 inch screen, well, things look pretty terrible. Still, I'm very impressed. The Vega 3000, running with nothing but the integrated graphics, can produce at least 30 frames per second in Red Dead 2, with some pretty big sacrifices, but it's still running nonetheless. The result with the 200 GE really isn't too different at all. There's about one frame in it when that's clocked to 3.8 gigahertz the same. So if you have a 200 GE already, there's probably no need to upgrade to the 3000 G. However, if you don't have one of these APUs and you'd like one, you'd like a low power, low cost solution, then the 3000 G would be preferable simply because it's newer and it's probably going to be the only one available uh, at this point moving forward to buy brand new. On used sites, the price may vary a little bit more, the gap may be a bit bigger, but if you're buying new at £40 or $50, then the 3000G is going to be the one to go for, out of either this or the 200, 220 or 240GEs that came before it. So let's move on to something that this chip was designed for. CSGO, 1080p with the low settings across the board here, some on very low, you're going to see around 85 frames per second, and there were really no severe frame drops, anything like that to speak of. It was a very smooth 85 FPS, and I could happily play CSGO online using this APU, which by the way remains fairly cool and quiet as well. What I will say about the stock fan, or my stock fan, was that it seemed to produce a screaming noise, it really wasn't pleasant, but I swapped it out for a Ryzen stock cooler, and that issue went away. I don't know what that was all about at all. I'm not sure if it's going to be a common problem across the board, but yeah, my, my fan didn't sound too good, the one that came paired with the 3000. Even PUBG will be playable at 720p with the very low preset. With the 3000G, you're going to be seeing 32 FPS. The game doesn't look fantastic, but it's still playable. You can still play it, and... With the 200GE as a comparison once again, you'll see about 28 with that APU. Again, just like Kingdom Come and Crisis before it, the chips are sort of either side of that 30 FPS line. On one hand, you're just under it with the 200, and on the other hand, you're just over it with the 3000. Even when I started speeding down the road on this motorbike, the frame rate remained pretty steady with the 3000G, and I wasn't expecting it to, to be honest. Finally, as far as games are concerned, I tried Battlefield 5. This was the one I was most worried about, and I think I had every right to be worried because 30 FPS probably isn't achievable here. Um, I was getting 29 with the low settings, and there were a few heavy stutters, especially during this opening level. The game's levels vary so much in terms of performance and setting, so expect different results throughout. 29 was the average on the 3000, but 25 was the average on the 200 GE. So again, that could be seen as a pretty significant difference because 29 isn't too far off of that 30. So to finalise, we have the Cinebench R20 multi and single core results. As you can see, just like throughout, both chips are very close, with the 3000G pulling slightly ahead. I think throughout, it's done better than the 200GE when it comes to the average frame rates and the percentile figures too. Both chips are, of course, fairly weak, but they are entry-level parts, and I think for the money, well, you can't really go wrong. If you're looking for something cheap, yet something surprisingly capable, even in AAA games, I was never expecting to get 30 frames per second in half of the games we tested today, especially not Crisis, which is funny considering it's the oldest game I tested out of today's list, but there we go, the 3000G, it's another solid entry to the Athlon lineup from AMD. I do hope they continue to release them. I'm glad that AMD are updating the entirety of their product line. This still isn't a Zen 2 part though, so it'll be interesting to see where this lineup heads in the future, just how much more powerful these APUs get. Of course, it's probably in their own interests not to overdo it, because then there'll be no need for lower end discrete graphics cards. I don't think it'll ever get to that point, not at least within the next 10 years or so, but for the time being, for now, I think these are pretty good for those on a tighter budget. I would love to see the day when we do get APUs that can run modern AAA titles at 1080p with 60 frames per second. You know, that would really be 
a fantastic technical achievement but I hope you've enjoyed the look at this 3000G. I hope to explore it a little more in the future, perhaps with a discrete GPU in a cheap system build. But until then, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.